I started participating in Zookas four years ago, um, and I remember the very first meeting that was scheduled. Carrie Manning, our former department chair, scheduled a meeting and asked us, you know, anyone who's interested in sort of the Zookas mission, um, you know, which is focused on raising awareness around issues broadly related to crime, justice, punishment. Um, and so, you know, when you ask about my vision for Zookas, um, you know, four years ago, if any of us had a vision, I don't, wouldn't necessarily say that any of us knew exactly what was gonna happen to Zookas over four years. Um, but, but, but I give all the credit to Carrie Manning for, for asking me to, to lead Zookas. And, and also to Dr. Gershon, um, Sarah Gershon, for running it the first year. And it, when Zookas first started, it had just been in the aftermath of the Ferguson events. And so uh, Dr. Gershon had scheduled some events associated with race and policing in the post-Ferguson era. And so, you know, when I was thinking about taking Zookas over um, at the end of the first year, I think the big thing was it seemed like it was mostly going to be about sort of hosting events and bringing speakers in to sort of raise awareness about crime and punishment issues in the state of Georgia and, and across the nation. Traditionally what happens around the country is when there's any type of reform effort, no matter what domain, what area, what subject matter, it's usually just a one hit and then everyone pats themselves on the back and walks away. And no one really continues taking a look at it in terms of, well, did we do well in the first place? I mean, what we passed that we called reform, is it really working? And it's interesting when, you know, you hear Jerry and Monica speak about this idea of Georgia not being a welcoming place or this concept of otherness. When I first went to run, I was told, you're not white, you're not black, you're other, you can't win. That was how they defined me. The intention is to uh, make these communities invisible. And if you make them invisible in the census, you can consolidate greater power uh, by making people invisible. <laughs> and you can consolidate electoral power, and you can, but it, it comes at a, a significant cost. Local municipalities and states will lose out on billions of dollars of federal funding if people aren't counted. What works is when you see an actual client in need who really can't go back, who these random laws and policies are, you know, affecting in a direct way, it's hard to turn your head. You're always going to do your best when you're at a job when the manager's looking at you, but in the moments they can't see is define us who we are, right? And so, of course, you can see that I'm 5'10", about 180 pounds. I'm Chinese American. I'm a convicted felon. I got out about two years ago. But see, what they don't see is when I was 15 years old and my parents left, and I asked my uncle to stay at his house, and he told me no because it was inconvenient. What he don't see is when I was 21, I never went in the house. I never picked up the gun, and I still went to prison. What they don't see is when I miss my son's 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th birthday that I made a vow to God that I'll never miss a birthday again. What they don't see is when I couldn't call my parents at night because it hurt it too bad to hear them cry. Those are the moments they couldn't see, but those are the moments that made me who I am today. The oppositions, the adversities that I had to face. Um, my takeaway from the Zookas Institute is that people really have good intentions in the way that the media frames. Um, information that's in the world, um, it shows that people really want to help. It was great people that I read that I knew nothing about. Um, I thought that some of the state representatives would be more speaking about helping themselves, but in reality they were here to help us. I'm a sociology major. I started off at Georgia State as an undergrad, um, and then I'm also in the 4 plus 1 program, which means I'm also a full-time grad student in the sociology department as well. Um, Sociology introduced me to effectively the world of um, social action, uh, getting involved in making a difference in other people's lives, um, and caring about people who have been specifically affected um, by social institutions that have targeted them. My favorite panel so far definitely had to be today's panel with Judge Teske and uh, Forever Family because it's nice to see how, like, the judge, how he's in the judicial system, he's directly in the judicial system, and he's working to help our community, and it's nice to see, you know, for lack of better terms, white people do that, because sometimes we, like, as a black woman, we don't feel that we're getting help in that area. So my favorite panel was the immigration reform panel with, um, 
Monica Kant and Jerry Gonzalez and Deborah Gonzalez, Representative Deborah Gonzalez. Um, I think before, like I've always lived in Georgia my entire life, but I didn't realize that um, there was such a large population of immigrants in Georgia and I found it really eye-opening to hear all about just immigration reform that's going on in Georgia and how far that they've come and how much work there is to be done in the future and I found that really inspiring and I really want to help in those initiatives. Um, but the Zookas Institute has really pushed me towards um, adding a law focus to my major. Um, obviously I was interested in um, the effects of mass incarceration before joining the Institute, but having heard from the speakers and hearing their really emotional testimony, when you see people talk about how they've been um, away from their families and away from society, and um, I feel like I need to do everything I possibly can, given the tools that Georgia State has given me, to try to fix or, or rectify some of the issues in our criminal justice system. So we have the students break out into small groups in the afternoon. Um, each group is led by two graduate students and then a team of between four and six undergraduate students. Um, they have about two hours each afternoon to work on various projects. Um, for instance, this year some of the groups are working on um, support for felon disenfranchisement laws and how information affects people's attitudes. Um, other groups have worked on how information affects people's support for the death penalty. Um, in the past we've worked on mandatory minimum sentencing. Uh, we also have groups this year that are working on um, uh, trust in the police and how different uh, types of information can affect people's trust in the police and their willingness to use force in different situations. So again, the goal really is to, to kind of break students into small groups um, so that they can learn about social science research by engaging in social science research. I think it's a really unique opportunity for both the graduate and undergraduate students to have original data often collected by ourselves at GSU or collected through uh, surveys of students at GSU and then to be involved in both the design of those experiments um, and the analysis of that data and the reporting of those findings and their implications to larger audiences. And so it's a really unique opportunity I believe both for the undergrads and the graduate students. I decided to participate in the Zuka Summer Institute um, this summer because I felt that it was an important opportunity to connect with leaders in the community as well as our uh, the staff here at GSU to see how the things that we learn in class translate into the real world and how we can take the skills that we're learning in the political science realm and the legal realm and apply it to these controversial, controversial issues that need solutions. My afternoon research group is doing a content analysis of articles from the Wall Street Journal and New York Times in an effort to see how media framing affects the public perception of police brutality. So I've been a group instructor with the Zucas Institute for the past four years now, and I would say that the main reason that I keep coming back each summer is because I'm really passionate about fostering undergraduate research. Um, so, I mean, like having the opportunity just to come in and work with these students the first week after finals, students who would rather be here than, you know, off partying somewhere else. Um, it's so gratifying to me because I think it speaks magnitudes to, you know, how enthusiastic they are about learning, their dedication and commitment to uh, college, and it's great. It's an honor for me to be able to work with these students every summer. So I've actually been involved with Zucas uh, for four years since my second year of my um, my program in the PhD. Uh, I started working with Dr. Bolson as a GRA, but since then um, I have been working with uh, these groups for research and from that research we've actually been able to carry forth the work that we've done with our, our groups in the white papers from the summer institutes into uh, publishable papers. My role as a graduate student uh, has has changed a little bit uh, year to year but for the most part I do a lot of uh, uh, designing of the studies that, that are worked on by each of the uh, undergraduate research uh, groups. So I do a lot of the designing of studies and then a lot of, uh, of the data analysis components. This year in particular, uh, I'm really serving as a floater, going team to team, offering um, help with the data analysis side of things for any group that needs it. The mission of Zucus was always to both raise awareness um, through bringing, building partnerships with people in the greater um, Atlanta metro area. Now, looking forward, where we see Zucus is, um, you know, how can we make this more impactful? How can we take this beyond Georgia State, perhaps? Because when I think about the power 
and the potential that rests in this room and here? I mean, my God, what you could do? You literally really could change the world.